Hi, welcome to Mercurius Being. I am Amy Jensen and I am here with your astro update for the Aquarius full moon. This will be exact August 1st at 1.32 p.m. That's central time. And I'll go back into the chart. Um, but let's just begin with saying this full moon, Aquarius full moon, is um, coming in hot after the moon has conjuncted Pluto or will have conjuncted Pluto in Capricorn and at the same time opposing the north and south nodes, Aries Libra. Um, and that'll happen um, just the night before. It'll happen on July 31st at 9.13 p.m. Central. And I'd like to just take a moment and let you know that I am hosting a free astrology and sound session, a 30-minute session on Sunday night, um, July 30th at 8 p.m. Central Time. Um, so check out my um, website, uh, fill out the contact form for that, and I will send you a Zoom link for that event. And you don't need to know anything about astrology or anything about music to join. Um, and we'll just go into and feel into um, the astrology of this time and just really get into the resonance of your body with some listening in and some breath work and some toning. So I hope you can enjoy, enjoy, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you can join me. Um, so this lunation on August 1st is coming in after the moon meets up with Pluto and Capricorn, square the nodes, July 31st. Pluto just had its yearly opposition with the sun, July 21st, squaring the nodes, this really big cardinal cross moment. And then um, August 3rd, Pluto alone will square the nodes exactly. Um, so really just in a nutshell, we are into some big face the music moments individually and collectively. This is a great time to be honest with ourselves, feel the energy, feel what's coming up within ourselves and notice what's happening collectively and um, do something about it. Um, this really is a moment where we get to decide if we're going to evolve and, and, tra and transmute this energy and use this fuel to transform in our lives or if we're just gonna kind of continue to, to sleep in. Let me, let, let's put it that way, like, hey, business as usual. Yeah, I don't like the way the government works, but yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I don't like the way the corporate work structure is, but mm, you know, oh, this is just how things are, you know. Well, are they that way because we're projecting our lack of individual authority onto other authority figures or systems um, and allowing them to continue to make us feel like we don't have power, but we're actually giving them the power like by, by doing that? Or are we going to say, hey, what power do I have in my life? Uh, what resonates with me? What feels right in my heart and my body? And what can I do about this for my own life? Then what can I do about this and share with my community? So a lot of grassroots energy that's coming up with this, possible take this energy and fuel and turn it into something. Um, so really looking in honestly within ourselves um, and really feeling into what would you like to do with the rest of your life. And I'm gonna say just some of these notes are a really big paraphrase on um, the Dark Cross talk that I just heard Adam Gainsburg give um, July 21st. So he is soul sign astrology. He is amazing. Um, so this is just my little take and my little two cents because he gave this incredible two hour presentation, um, but really got me thinking about this. And it's it was really interesting listening to it because it was very validating for me, not only as a person, <laughs> but as an astrologer as well, because, um, and you'll notice this, this forum um, is probably gonna stay very similar. It may change into more experiential work, such as my sound and astrology um, workshops that I do or my individual sessions that I do with people. Um, but my astrology work I've been feeling has needed to change for a while. It's just, 
it's in my head, it's not what I want it to be, but I haven't really seen the big picture, but I've been doing some kind of experimental sessions with some wonderful cooperative um, and very helpful friends, um, friends with feedback <laughs> benefits. So that's a wonderful type of friend to have. Um, so I've been trying out different things and so I'm really excited. So this, this dark cross energy, I was feeling it in my life. I have my own uh, transits going on, which um, is also there leading me into this path. But um, at the same time, this dark cross energy really struck me as um, permission granted as far as get in yourself. What do you wanna do? What do you want to do with the rest of your life? Who are you? What are you afraid of? Where do you feel vulnerable? Where do you feel longing? Where are things going right? Where are you not letting yourself just be happy or like being successful? They're just everything. Like look at everything in your life, everything that's coming up for you, everything you're feeling in your body and feeling in your heart. Um, because the mind was really the giveaway for me because the mind was coming up with these really um, great negations. And, um, but it was really good to notice them because that linked into my fear about doing something different. Um, and maybe having my astrological practice take a left turn uh, because I really don't know where it's gonna go. But I do know that that's where it needs to go because it's gonna feel alive and it'll be more aligned um, and exciting because um, it will feel more real and more akin to who I am. So take this as an invitation um, to show up for yourself during this time and really do the work. So, I mean, I know I'm, I'm doing this video, it's the 27th. Um, so the Pluto conjunct the moon is on the 31st um, and then Pluto square the nodes exactly as on the third, but you know, hey, we're, we're in the ballpark here, right? This, this energetic door is open. So um, it's not like, ah, oh, damn it, I missed it. I, I missed the portal, I can't go through. It's like, no, start looking at yourself, start looking within, and that is the opening that you are seeking, okay? Um, so again, showing up for yourself, and for others, but show up as yourself, okay? Not a presentable face, and I think I talked a little bit about that last time um, with the Libra South Node, um, but just your honest and truthful face, um, kind of turning your BS meter on, like up to 11, as they would say, um, for yourself, okay? Well, it will also be on for other people too, as we shall see, but really like what is your BS? What lies are you telling yourself about who you are and who you are not? What you can and what you can't do, okay? And I mean that is like what you are able to do and what you are not able to do. Um, go toward this idea and go toward the lies that you find you're telling yourself or those negations that come up because they're really linked into what you really want. Like my negation comes up, like I can't do that or I better, and I know it's not even me, it's like a false conditioning, but it's a big fear. And there's, there's fear and vulnerability tied in with it, but that's exactly what you have to go into. That's the Pluto. It's like, just, just go into it because in that is the aliveness. That's the raw, alive threshold, birth and death energy, right? So go into that and go into it with honesty and urgency. Um, and through that exploration, you will find what is true about yourself, what you do desire, what you would long to do, what are your gifts and things that make you uniquely you and offer these gifts to the world. Specifically, then your community, community your family, your friends, your community, and then to the world, right? Become part of the dialogue become part of the world and community that you would like to live in. So by becoming what you'd like and offering it to the world, you are contributing and creating the world you want to see, the world you want to live in, the world that you want your children or your family or your grandchildren 
or your, your pets, <laughs> everybody to live in, right? And that can just literally start with each of us. It, as a matter of fact, that's the only way it's going to start. So I'm gonna flip into the Aquarius full moon Aquarius, full moon, think differently, entertain heresy. Boy, was that fun to, to um, say and to write when I wrote that down. I'm like, oh, I like that. Go against the grain. And then I always think of legs up the wall pose. So you can just, just Google that and or legs on a chair pose. Anything where your lower legs are higher than your heart, you are making your circulatory system work differently. Do it with support so it's not aggravating. It can be a very calm and relaxing way, but physiologically it gets things moving against the grain, okay? And then I started thinking of refresh, all the RE words. We're, we're going to be starting the Mercury retrograde um, cycle soon. Um, but I'm a little ahead of that with these RE words, refresh and renew and realize, and there are more, so just hold on to your hats. Um, and then it just reminded me of RE or RE or RE in Sargam, like the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. In Western music, we have a Sargam in Eastern music and uh, Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Ma, Da, Ma, Pa, Da, Ha, Nisa, and I'm just a baby at Sargum. So I'm just going to offer that to you. So this is how much I know, less than a, a hair's breadth. But it's the second note in Sargam, Rashab, which means the great me. And Re, R-E, in Sargam is sharp and firm of texture as it is as if a bent spine is being positioned straight to make it erect. It is the inquisitive mind always eager to know more. And that passage is from Anandra George from Heart of Sound. And I'll put the links below. Um, so from there, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit and just do a little paraphrase on the Sabian symbols for the degrees. So for 10 degrees Aquarius, where the moon is at, um, from Linda Hill's Sabian Symbols. Um, and again, super paraphrased, but realizing things and times are changing. It's time to work on yourself or your image, realizations about other people, finding that they're not what you thought they were, um, falling the sense or the energy or the uh, currents of falling off the pedestal, yourself or others, disillusionment, being let down, but waking up just in time, staying true, and reversals of fortune. For 10 degrees Leo, where the sun is at, and again, this is nine degrees, round it up, um, waking up to sunnier times. The air is crisp, so the air of the mind, um, the body is refreshed, it's um, the ability to ground um, reality itself for a new round of activity, okay? Refreshment after the long night of the soul, awakening energies and bringing new solutions, not letting go of difficult situations, so that stuckness. So this is kind of some of the inharmonious, right? You see it, you know it's difficult, but just not letting it go. I. Oh, I, I don't know if I can butcher this, or <laughs> I don't know if I can butcher this story. I don't know if I can tell the story right. I will probably butcher it. I remember a, a Once Upon a Yogi story from the Kriya tradition, and there was a man, um, uh, a traveler along the path, sees somebody holding a thorny bush and just in pain. They're crying and in pain and just holding onto this bush, and the, the traveler helps the the other person just like unwind and, and carefully take the arms, his arms and body away from this thorny bush and extricate from all the, the pierces of the thorns. And, um, and the person is like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, that feels amazing. And then all of a sudden you could see the thought 
crossing the mind of the person and they're like, oh, no, this is my bush. You know, this is my thorny, difficult situation. And they immediately reattach themselves to the thorns. And um, like I said, butchering that, but the gist of it is holding on to difficult situations because we are so bonded and relating to them so much. That is, those are literally our stories. And we don't, sometimes, as much as they hurt, for whatever reason, we don't want to give them up. So, or the sense of persisting with problems that have been solved, just like in that story, like the problem solved, but why are we still like looping about, wow, that really was a big problem. Wow, that really was a big problem, <laughs> you know? So let's release those, okay? Um, so this, the um, sun is in the area of the heavens, uh, Pushya, which means flowering, or, um, and it's the symbol is the lotus. Um, and it has this balance because of the Jupiter and Saturn involved. I'm not going to go deeply into this, but um, this is from Camilla Sutton. The balance between expansion and restriction. There's a sense of maturation occurring. Realizing life is part of the greater cycle. That there is a limited destiny to be experienced, which is connected to the growth and restrictions of life. So growing and restricting and growing and restricting and living this life, but knowing that it is part of a bigger cycle, kind of placing ourselves within that. The flower is a symbol of latent faculties and the outward blossoming and expression of ideas. And I can see I'm getting a little glossy. It's a little hot out here, but I like being outside so much that I thought, oh, I just can't be inside in the air conditioning right now. Um, okay, so the arrow is another symbol for this um, pushya area of the heavens um, and it's about ambition and directing activity so there's about a sense of flowering and then there's a sense of shooting an arrow having a focus having a directness knowing where you're going and then a circle is another symbol for this area of the heavens which a circle is complete within itself um, and then again it just focuses our attention on this whole lifetime and the whole lifetime that we have in its entirety. Okay, so really completeness, but yet potential, okay? The area of the heavens where the moon is in is Shravana, which is literally means listening. And the symbol is the ear. And Vishnu, the preserver, is the um, deity associated with this. And this is associ associated um, with its in the Vedic system, it's Capricorn, ruled by Saturn. So we have Saturn again, um, Saturn and the moon. So there's something about limitations. Um, of course, I always think Saturn has a partial rulership of hearing because of the little bones in the ear. Um, and then the moon is about the quietness and the reflections, but also about the illusions of life. So Saturn helps us get real about the illusions and maybe be disciplined, going back to the placement of where the, the sun is at, um, of helping us discipline toward a goal. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, even if we don't exactly know the hows and whys, and I'll get back to that. Um, so the word Vishnu, Vishnu, not the deity, but the word itself means that which is everywhere. So it, it pervades everything as Vishnu, as Purusha or consciousness does. So there's consciousness in everything. This iPhone and the stand it's on and the flowers and every part of the creation has consciousness, okay? So there's a lot of um, listening in and growth and being aware of the fullness of this garden that in which we find ourselves um so it's really more of a spiritual area of the heavens let us say as far as goals go um spiritual in nature more so than material in nature but there's a great energy available for that okay so getting back to our our e words um this full aquarius moon realization from deep listening into your heart 
and your body, refreshing because it points back to your center. How do you really feel about something? Refreshing because it really is that simple. And then reflecting as a full moon, reflecting upon what it is you need to let go, returning to clarity, the calm water upon which the lotus flower floats. And lotuses, like water lilies, are rooted deep within the muddy water. So this mucky muddiness, this obscurity, gives birth to the clarity and the beauty of the lotus. The lotus opens up to the air and to the light. It, it shows itself, it shows its inner beauty. And it shares its unique colors and shape to the world. It doesn't hide itself. The lotus simply is, and it bobs gently in response to the water's surface. Be real with yourself, and as you are real with yourself, be loving, be accepting, be compassionate, and all of those things just Continually remind yourself of that loving compassion and acceptance for yourself and your journey and release any judgments. Judgments about how and why you are where you are. Resist the urge to go into victimhood and blame, blaming others for where you are and also blaming yourself relinquish, knowing the hows and whys of what is coming next, and relinquish all the yeah buts, okay? Um, and as Patabi Joyce, who has, is problematic I believe now, but um, used to say, do the practice and all is coming. So that goes back to that Saturnian energy, the Saturn energy. Do the practice and all is coming. I've really been doing that a lot myself lately, more so than usual. And I write it down every day and cross them off every day because sometimes I don't, like I said, I, I'm not sure how everything I'm doing is changing. But if I practice, I'll be ready for when the puzzle pieces come together, okay? Receive the blessings of the wellspring within. So be yourself and dig into your you-ness, your you, yourself-ness, to chart the next steps of your journey. You are waking up just in time. Don't hit the snooze button. Listen in. Take a moment, when you wake up, listen in, drop into your heart, drop into your body. Do not drop into your screen. So here's my screen, right? Posturally, we just focus down. It's like, open up, open your heart. Just such a different posture, draw your shoulder blades together. It's like, wow, even that like, hey, I'm ready for the world. I'm ready for the sun, I'm ready for the moon, I'm ready for the air, the breeze. Just keep your head up. Again, your shoulders drawn back, your heart open, and your eyes and ears attentively taking in your experience and letting this experience be unfiltered by the perceptions and expectations of others. No matter how well-meaning these perceptions and expectations are, and whether they're familial, ancestral, um, your current community, uh, social media, you know, looking good for the gram, how about it has to feel good for my heart? That's my new measuring stick. That's 
that's the new place I'm going, right? Does it feel good for my heart? Does it resonate through my body in a way that nourishes me, refreshes me, enlivens me? These are questions for yourself, okay? And if it does, then you are showing up in the world with a sense of wholeness. Aligning yourself with wholeness, stepping out into the world with a sense of wholeness. This is what I personally want for myself and for the community and the world in which I live. So I am starting with myself right now, fresh start, just as myself in all of my humanity with all of my karmic proclivities with all of the shadow and all of the light refusing and negating nothing no part of my experience is relegated to the shameful, icky basement <laughs> storage pot, spot in your house or your temple of self that's just, oh, that's where the ugly, icky, yucky part goes, the part that I can't explain that I'm horrified. Like, nope, here it is. This is all of it, right? and then equally shining into your light. Sometimes that's harder than owning our shadows. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, so just again, refusing nothing, negating nothing, listening into everything, loving and learning from the whole experience. And that is all my friends for today. Until next time, namaste.